The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's join the great Gildersleeve. It's a Saturday night in Summerfield, and so we find him, as usual, occupying one of the best of the rickety chairs which furnish the Jolly Boys Club up above Floyd Munson's barber shop. At the moment, Judge Hooker is the only other member present. Wonder where everybody is. I can't imagine. Seems like we're having trouble getting a quorum here lately. Maybe the club needs something. Possibly. Well, what'll we do, Judge? I don't know. Maybe we could uh, call up somebody. Who? I don't know. Club may be getting in a rut. Maybe we ought to take on some new activity. Like, say, bowling. I don't care for bowling. All the better. It might help your liver. <laughs> Wait. Well, here comes somebody. Who goes there? Well, gentlemen, how are the jolly boys tonight? Good evening, Peavy. Peavy, let me give you a hand with those cokes. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Stick them right here in the ice bucket. You know, this would be a thirsty club without you, Peavy. Last week, we had to send Floyd out for drinks. Where were you? Uh, last week? Yes. Uh, last Saturday? Yes. I decided to spend the evening with Mrs. Peavy. Well, that's no way for a jolly boy to behave, Peavy. Yeah, that's easy enough for a bachelor to say. You fellas don't have to explain what goes on down here. Why is that old club so important, she said. You see those men all the time anyway, she said. Hard question to answer. But it's only one night a week, Peavy. No wife in the world wants her husband hanging around every night. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yes, sir, you'd be surprised. Somebody else coming up the stairs. We'll have a quorum yet. Oh, it's the chief. Hi, chief. Good evening, Commissioner. Peavy? Judge? Hello, oh, chief. Chief? What's detained you, old man? Detain me? Doesn't seem like the old gang gets down here as promptly as they used to. Where's Floyd, for instance? He's married, too. Well, come on, let's get started in on some poker. Uh, fellas, uh, not yet. Uh, could you let the game wait just a little while? What for? Well, in case somebody dropped in. Think how it looks. Cards all over the table. Everybody's smoking. Nobody's gonna drop in. Come on, Judge. Let's get the chips divvied up so we can get going. Fellas, please. As a personal favor. Hi there, you... jolly boys. Deal me in. Yeah, deal them in. Hi, Floyd. Hi, Commish. Hi, Peeve. Sorry if I've been holding you boys up, but I had to take Lovey and dump her to picture. Hi, Judge. Hi, Chief. Yeah. Hi, Floyd. Well, what are we waiting for? Not that I like the game, but I need the money. But I'm counting out the chips, Floyd. Keep your shirt on. Uh, hold it a minute, Judge, before you deal them. What's on your mind, anyway, Chief? Well, I asked a certain man to drop in and visit us tonight. I hope nobody minds. Who is he? What about it? Well, he's a friend of mine. Stop beating around the bush. Who is he? You all know him, I guess. Don't you all know Dr. Needham? The preacher? Uh, yes, the preacher. Nailed me after church on Sunday. Said he wanted to talk to us. Tonight? In a few minutes, I guess. He said around 8.30. And... Chief, you might have given us a little warning. Well, maybe I should have, but I was afraid you wouldn't come. I would have worn a blue suit. That's a cinch. Hey, fellas, don't you think we ought to put the cards away? Thanks, Peavy, old man. Yeah, the chips, too, Horace. Yeah, I suppose you're right. How about all them bottles laying there in that tub of ice? That don't look so nice to a, you know... Where can we put it? Uh, drag it over here and stick it in the closet, Chief. Okay. We ought to open a window, too, fellas. <sighs> Gets to smelling like a joint up here. I'll open it for a minute. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, why don't you throw out that cigar? Well, all right. Where can we dump these ashtrays? Gosh, Floyd, you might clean up the place once in a while. How'd I know a preacher was coming? You can shut your window. I'm cold. Let her air out a minute more, Peeve. Hey, I think he's turning in the alley. Huh? Yep, it's him. Well, it... It don't look great, but it looks better than it did. Sure. Ain't like he was coming to inspect a Sunday school. Floyd, do me a favor. 
Watch your language, will you? Don't worry about me. I've been around lots of preachers. Shut up. Well, if it isn't Dr. Needham. We were just chatting about you, weren't we, fellas? Yes, we were. <laughs> Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good evening to all of you, gentlemen. Judge. Good evening, Doctor. Chief. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Doctor. Uh, let me hang your coat up. Thank you. And Mr. Peavy, the good apothecary, I'm glad to see you. Mm, uh, glad to be of service any time, Doctor. Uh, doctor, maybe you don't know our other member here, uh, Floyd Munson. I don't believe I... don't I... think you know me, Dr. Needham. I go to Dr. Tutwiler down at... Uh... Of course. I have a very high regard for Dr. Tutwiler, and if you are one of his flock, uh, Dr. Tutwiler's a fine man, isn't he? One of the best. Have a chair, Doctor? Uh, here's a good chair, Doctor. Nice, comfortable one. I think I'll just sit in a straight chair, thank you. Mortify the flesh and improve the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, nice, comfortable club rooms you have here. Yes, we're quite proud of our quarters. Well, here was this vacant room over the shop. I was glad to make it available, free of charge. Is that so? You weren't being so generous, Floyd. You couldn't make any money renting it. I'd like to know why I couldn't. No facility. Uh, <clears throat> it certainly is cold out tonight, isn't it, Doctor? It's rather chilly, yes. Uh, how long has your club been in existence, may I ask? Oh, about two years, hasn't it, fellas? Three I recall we organized in the fall of 43. How many members do you have? This is it. Just the five of us. Mm, quite exclusive. And may I ask just what is the purpose of the club? Uh, did uh, you say purpose, Doctor? Yes. What is the purpose of your club? Well, uh, we don't exactly have any purpose, Doctor. It's just a club. We just get together once a week and raise a little... It's uh, social, Doctor. <laughs> Isn't that it, fellas? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, it seems to me I've heard the club had some kind of musical interests. Oh, well, that too. Yeah, we're kind of a musical club. See, we've got a piano. Yes, it's not much of a piano. I have a Wembley at home. Good enough for this gang. We just sing old barbershop songs, Doctor. Oh, I love singing. I used to sing myself when I was a younger man. You still sing, Doctor. I've heard you take a high tenor on some of those hymns on Sunday. Well, I let myself go occasionally, but when I was at Divinity School, we used to do some real singing, I can tell you. Did you ever sing down by the old mill stream? It Floyd. Huh? No, I don't remember down by the old stream. But uh, there was another song, uh, Love Me and the World is Mine. Uh, do you know that? Oh, Sure. <clears throat> I care not for the stars that shine. That's it. How'd it be if we tried that once, huh, Doctor? If uh, you gentlemen will permit an outsider... Don't think of yourself that way, Doctor. You're one of we boys. Come on, fellas. I, I, I care, care not for the stars that shine. I dare not hope to Indeed, I, I thought that was lovely. <laughs> lovely. How about another round, Doc? No, thank you. Uh, as a matter of fact, I came here with a purpose. Gentlemen, I wonder if you know the work of the Summerfield Orphanage. Sure, that's where they take care of the orphans. Uh, shut up, Floyd. <laughs> Mr. Munson is quite right. The orphanage takes care of between 25 and 30 orphans at the present moment. But they're desperately in need of funds. Uh-oh. So, uh, I've been going about appealing to various organizations for aid. I wonder if you kind-hearted gentlemen would be interested in adopting a lovely baby girl. Doctor! Well, perhaps I've put it too alarmingly. You wouldn't actually adopt this child. You'd simply contribute regularly to the orphanage in her behalf. And you would accept as a group the responsibility for her. Her, uh, her name is Christina. She's eight months old. Lovely child. Did you have any figure in mind, Doctor? Uh, ten dollars a month. 
Now, I don't want you gentlemen to give me your answer right this minute. I want you to think about it. If you care to, you may go out to the orphanage and visit little Christina. Think it over and let me have your decision. I think I know the answer you will find in your hearts. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I'll get your coat, Doctor. Good night, all. Good night, night, Dr. Needham. I told you he was a nice fellow. He's as nice a preacher as I know. Well, sure, he's a nice fellow. Gee, if this club has ten bucks a month to throw around, I don't think we ought to blow it on a baby. I'd rather put it in a pool table. <laughs> Floyd, haven't you got any heart? Certainly I got a heart. It's only two dollars a month apiece. That ain't the money, it's the principle. Well, I'm in favor of the doctor's proposition. What do you say, Peavy? Mrs. Peavy always wanted a girl. I'm for it. Well, Floyd, are you going to be a spoil sport? Who's a spoil sport, you big sport? You are, you big fellas, fellas. Let's be jolly boys. Uh-huh. What did Dr. Needham think if he could hear us calling each other names? I didn't call anybody names. Well, let's think about what the doctor said, fellas. We shouldn't rush into this. We should look in our hearts. Floyd, would you do one thing? Before you decide, would you go out there with us and look at the little girl? Little Christina. Well... Come on, Floyd, that's fair enough. Look at her and then we'll decide. Well, all right. But now, for the love of Pete, can we play poker for the rest of the evening? <laughs> Deal the cards, Horace. Let the chips fall where they may. You know, it's a real pleasure to tell you that famous Kraft mayonnaise is once again available. Yes, although Miracle Whip salad dressing, another Kraft product you've been waiting for, continues to be scarce because of the sugar shortage, Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise is back. Fine salad oil is becoming more plentiful, and Kraft can make a fair supply of the truly superior mayonnaise most of you remember. Superior because it's made from only choice ingredients. Fine salad oil, selected eggs fragrant vinegar and spices, and as a final touch, genuine fresh lemon juice. No wonder Kraft mayonnaise has such distinctive, delicate flavor, such a rich, homemade goodness. It's easy to see why the most discriminating hostesses choose this particular mayonnaise, for flavor and for surpassing smoothness. A special beater patented by Kraft gives it a velvety texture you could never accomplish in your own kitchen. Yes, you'll be taking baths when you make salads from famous Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. Now available in reasonable quantity. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Here he comes, Marge. All right, Bertie, he's down. Hi, Uncle. Ah, uh, good morning, children. Why, Uncle, you best. Don't tell me you're going to church with us. Uh, of course, I always go to church on Sundays. Well, I always try. I don't always make it, perhaps. Leroy, how many times have I told you? If you must read the funny papers. I'm going to pick them up. Don't worry. Uh, now come and sit down. Did you have a good time at the club last night, Uncle? We had a very lovely meeting, yes. Leroy, if you're trying to crawl into that glass, it can't be done. (laughs) I'm just trying to get all the juice. Well, sip it politely. No back somersaults. Remember, this is Sunday. Okay. Yeah, we had a very nice meeting last night, children. Dr. Needham was there. Dr. Needham at the Jolly Boys? What's so strange about that? What do you think goes on down there? What does go on down there, Unc? Never mind. It's for grown-ups. What was Dr. Needham doing there? Is that why you're going to church? Uh, Well, as a matter of fact, it's something that might interest you children. How would you like to have a baby to take care of? A baby? Uncle, do you mean it? Oh, that would be wonderful. Uh, No, wait a minute. Did you hear that, Leroy? A baby? I'd rather have a dog. (laughs) Oh, but think what fun it would be. You can do lots more things with a baby. Feed him and and dress him and and bathe him and play with him. Uh, Wait a minute. You can't teach him tricks. You can so. Dogs are smarter. They are not. 
You were a baby once. You mean to say you're not smarter than a dog? Well, it depends. Would it be a boy baby or a girl baby? And where are we going to get it? I'm coming to that if you'll just listen a moment. Oh, uh, good morning, Bertie. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Gillsleeve. If that darn old, excuse me, it's that waffle iron, it went and stuck again. Yeah, uh, that's all right, Bertie. Bertie, we're going to have a baby. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Uh, don't worry. Uh, this isn't going to make any work for you, Bertie. But we're not going to have the baby here. What? What good is a baby if you can't have the use of him? Yeah. <laughs> Let me explain, will you? Okay. <clears throat> now, this was an idea of Dr. Needham's. He thought it would be nice if different organizations around this town would each undertake to provide for some child out of the children's home. They'll sort of sponsor it and be a godfather to it and pay for its upkeep next year. Oh, I think that's real nice. Yes, yeah, so do I. You going to do it then? Well, we're going to go out there to the home this afternoon and look over the uh, proposition. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one of our members is holding out. Who? Never mind. Why don't you throw him out of the club? That's not the way the clubs are run, Leroy. Piggy threw me out of his club. I threw him out of mine. <laughs> well, the jolly boys try to be more democratic. Besides, we can't throw him out. He owns the club room. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve, how old is this baby you're talking about? Well, I believe about eight months, Bertie. She's a little girl. Oh, I was thinking maybe I could knit her a sweater or some booties or something. Well, I think that would be lovely. I thought you children might like to contribute a little something, too, out of your allowances. Uh, as a Christmas gesture, 25 cents a month, say? Oh, I'd love to. Would we own part of it? The baby, I mean? Uh, well, I'd say you'd have an interest in her, certainly. I'll give half a buck. So will I. Well, that's very generous, children. I'm glad to see you respond that way. Is she cute, Unky? Well, I haven't seen her myself yet. All babies are cute. Has she got a name? Uh, let's see. Her name is um, Christina. Oh. Couldn't we change it? Huh? Why, Christina's a beautiful name. I love it. It's crazy. I never heard it before. <laughs> oh, well, what do you know? Listen, I'm paying half a buck for this kid. I got a right to name it. <laughs> children, children. Christina's the name she was born with, my boy. You get used to it. Well, I suppose we can call her Chrissy. Say, when can we go out and see her, Unc? See her? Well, uh... Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make her a scrapbook. Kids are nuts about scrapbooks. Oh. When can we go out and see her, Unc? Why not this afternoon? Yeah, this afternoon. Well, I'm afraid that wouldn't be a very good idea. Oh, uh, why not? Uh, you see, this is a club affair, and besides, so many people all at once might scare the baby. We wouldn't scare her as much as you will. <laughs> And the chief of police. How would you like to see him leaning over your crib? <laughs> yes. Uh, tell you what I'll do, children. I can't let you go this time, but when I get back, I'll tell you all about her. How's that? I told you, Marge, a dog is better. All right, eat your breakfast. <laughs> Cigar, Judge, while we're waiting. No, thanks, Gilly. Peavy? Thank you. I never smoked the things. Yeah, that's right. Chief? I don't know that we ought to smoke in here, Commissioner. Why not? If we're careful, we're not going to set the home on fire. What well, isn't that? I don't think it would be a good example for the children. There aren't any children around. They're all outside playing. Well, just the same, it wouldn't look good. Chief is right, Gilly. All right. I won't smoke myself, then. There's an ashtray there. The superintendent must smoke. Well. Thanks, Miss Floyd. Hello, yeah, son. Hiya, gents. Chief. Well, we didn't think you were going to make it, Floyd. Gave you my word, didn't I? Just the same, I almost didn't. You should have seen me trying to convince Lovey I was coming out here this afternoon to see a baby. Ask me how old was the baby. Was she a blonde or a brunette? Still don't think she believes I'm out here. I don't believe it myself. Well, what do we do now? Just sit down and wait, I guess, Floyd. Now, Christina's asleep. Who? The baby. Oh. Well, what do we do? Just sit here till she wakes up? Till the nurse comes for us. Huh. Oh, well. I feel kind of foolish. What are we doing here, anyway? We nuts or something? You guys got me into this. 
Maybe it's like Dr. Needham said in his sermon today, Floyd. Children bring out the best in people. Hmm. There's a lot in that, Floyd. A lot in it. Well, don't look at me. You're the one who's holding out, Floyd. Oh, look, now, don't get me wrong. I got nothing against kids. I'm for kids. But when it comes well, to this is your adult... chance to prove it. Now, Commissioner. Don't tell them to put up or shut up. Gentlemen, the baby's asleep. She's down in the nursery. She can't hear us. Commissioner, I don't think we have to worry. Now, Floyd may talk tough, but after all, he came here this afternoon, and I think we can take that to mean Oh, that... no, you don't, Chief. I said I'd come here, and I came, but that's all. I ain't joining no baby syndicate. Like I said before, if you want to have a club where we have a little fun once in a while, I'd... Quiet. She's awake now, if you gentlemen would like to come this way. Oh, thank you, Ray. Uh, go ahead, Chief. Uh, after you, Commissioner. Uh, Judge? Thanks, Gilday. Come on, Floyd. Uh, Peavy? Just follow me, please. Oh, nurse, uh, say, I, uh... Yes, sir? I, uh, I brought along a little something for the baby. It's candy reindeer. I don't think it'd hurt her. <sighs> well, that's very nice of you, but I really don't think she ought to have it. No? Well, you know best, of course. That's why I asked. You better frisk the rest of this gang, nurse. I bet they're loaded with stuff. <laughs> I'd be glad to keep the reindeer if you like and give it to her when she's older. Would you? Thanks. Right through here, please. I'll just go ahead, if you don't mind, and see if she's still awake. All right, miss. <laughs> we'll wait outside for us. It's the first time I was ever in an orphanage. It don't look so bad. That nurse don't look so bad either. <laughs> nice motherly type. Yeah. Well, no, I don't know. She's not so motherly. It's the uniform. It's all right. You can come in. Uh, go ahead, fellas. Quiet now. No rumpus. Some gentlemen to see you, Christina. Look at that. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Come here, Floyd. Yeah. Huh. You know, I think she looks a little like you, Commissioner. She's got your double chin. <laughs> Cute, isn't she? Who gave her the rattle? Oh, that's standard equipment. Uh, go on. Play with your rattle, Christina. Play with your rattle. Doesn't want to play with a rattle, I guess. <laughs> Just lies there staring at everybody. Well, what do you make of all this, Christina? Hmm? What do you make of all this? She says, I just wish all these big bad men would go away and leave me alone. Hello there, Christina. Can you say hello? <laughs> hmm? Can you? Oh, for heaven's sake. Of course not, you old goat. She's only eight months old. Well, no harm in asking. Hey, hey look. Look. What? what? She moved. Hey, that's pretty good for a kid only eight months old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's a smart girl, Floyd. Aren't you, Christina? Would you, would you, would you, would you, would you, would you? Oh, 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 oh you better back off there, Commissioner. She's going to cry. Huh? Oh, dear me. You wouldn't cry, would you, Christina? Look at that little lip quiver. Mm, here it comes. Oh, gosh, I didn't mean to scare her. Here, let me try. What's the matter, kiddo? Look, see the pretty rattle? She's not interested in the rattle, Floyd. Hey, she smiled. That wasn't a smile, Floyd. That was gas. <laughs> Babies do that when they have a bubble. It was so a smile, wasn't it, nurse? I'd call it a smile. Yeah, what I tell you... Tell me, I don't know about babies. There she goes again. I think the kid likes me. Oh, I wouldn't touch her. Floyd! I ain't touching her. She grabbed hold of my finger. Look at that. Well, I'll be darned. She won't let go of it either. <laughs> Little son of a gun. Grab hold of my finger. I guess she does like you all right, Floyd. Pretty lucky. The little son of a gun. Say, miss, you don't suppose I could hold her for a minute... Nah, better not.
Before we go home, let's settle this, fellas. What do you think? Listen, that's a smart kid, you know it. That's one of the smartest kids I ever saw for her age. She ain't like most babies, just lie there. She's got personality, you know what I mean? She's smart, too. Yeah. Sure. Gentlemen, it's moved and seconded. It, what the heck, we don't have to be so darn formal about this. You all know the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Baby adopted. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve and the Jolly Boys will be back again very shortly. Many an expert homemaker is wearing a big smile these days now that she can serve the family super special salads made with the famous mayonnaise, which is once again available. Yes, it's really true. Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise is back and in reasonable quantity. Kraft Mayonnaise, you know, is a truly superior mayonnaise made from only choice ingredients. Fine salad oil, selected eggs, fragrant vinegar and spices. And as a final touch of inspiration, fresh lemon juice is added. With its distinctive homemade goodness, its rich, delicate flavor, Kraft mayonnaise glorifies any and every salad. Its texture, too, is something to be proud of. A special beater patented by Kraft gives Kraft mayonnaise a velvet smoothness almost impossible to accomplish in your own kitchen. In fact... It's mayonnaise, nothing short of perfection. Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. Wonder where everybody is. I can't imagine. This is just as bad as last week. Wait, here comes somebody. That's you, Chief? Hiya, fellas. Floyd! You're late, Floyd. Where are all the others? Phoebe phoned he's staying home tonight with the wife. How about the chief? Him, too. He's refereeing a kid basketball game down to the Y. Yep. And he's going straight home. I gotta be going myself. What? Yeah, I got Lovey waiting for me down in the car. Well, I guess I'll... Floyd, go... wait a minute. Yeah, stick around. Can't. Sorry. Lovey and I go on to movies. Give her a break for a change. Good night. Good night, Floyd. Well, what'll we do, Judge? I don't know. Maybe we should call up somebody. Who? I don't know. You know something? That baby could ruin this club. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross and Richard Legrand as Mr. Peavy. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Now, it's really true. You can make real, rich, velvety smooth ice cream in your refrigerator. Just ask your grocer for the Kraft product called Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z. One package makes six generous servings of ice cream, and very economically. You simply add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions on the package. Add fruit juices or flavoring for variety. Frizz contains plenty of fine cream and milk made by a process that retains marvelous freshness of flavor. Get Frizz from your food dealer tomorrow. Surprise the family with homemade ice cream tomorrow night. This is NBC, the national broadcast.